Good morning and welcome once again to our daily devotions. As we awaken this morning, we bring before the Almighty God all those in our world who are going through any turmoil, tribulation, families in distress, remembering the families of those injured in yesterday in different parts of the world or and even here in Barbados. We bring them before God, asking God's healing power in their lives. And we trust that today may be a day in which we continue to become all that God would have us be, to grow in faithfulness, to grow in understanding of God's love and God's peace. This morning I want to take us back, just in a short way, to the time of lockdown, and just as a memory where we weren't able to be on the road, where we weren't able to gather, and various persons use their creativity and the technology at their disposal to at least still be able to do something um, to connect with others. And as we began here in the Diocese of Barbados, our times of worship online, we were able to bring some young ladies together as we offer that song um, to the Almighty God. He knows my name.
Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. God of all times, who has no beginning or end, who stands outside of our concept of time, we greet you in this moment as our church signals the end of another cycle. We give thanks for all you've shown us and the ways in which you've led us in the former period. May we build on all that we have received and turn our hearts towards the new beginnings. Grant, O Divine One, that in this period to come, we may have the courage to continue to journey and to grow with every passing moment. Give us the courage to trust our guides and to follow where we are being led. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the people of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He is going to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Here ends the reading. The more we read the gospel stories, the more one wonders whether we have gotten the message yet or not. This morning's reading is one of those occasions when we really wonder if we understand what Jesus is about. I had a wonderfully familiar story of Zacchaeus. Unable to see Jesus and making every effort to be able to see him. In a sense, it speaks to the work that's needed. And sometimes as we seek to respond to the gospel, we oftentimes neglect to recognize that there is work to be done. In order to be able to see Jesus, 
in order to be able to fully experience all that Jesus stood for, we need to make an effort. Zacchaeus recognized his challenge. He was short in stature. So Zacchaeus then got very creative and decided to climb a tree. In climbing the tree, he was at a better vantage point given his height. And he was able to not only see clearly, but even more especially to be seen clearly. I think that's the first point for this morning's story. The work that we need to do in order not only to see Jesus, but to be seen by Jesus. We're often reminded that Jesus sees us in our purity. God sees us in our purity as God has created us. Not as we have conceived ourselves to be. And so in order to be able to see what God is seeing, there's work that we have to do. Because we are manifestations of the divine. And if our lives don't speak to that, then there is work that we must do. In order to be seen clearly and to see clearly. For it is God's desire that we see ourselves as he sees us. As he has created us. So there's much that we need to clear. We need to go higher. We need to leave the lower way of seeing life. And like Zacchaeus, climb up. Climb up into a higher vibration, into a higher energy. Where we can better resonate with the divine. Where we can be more aligned, more in tune with the divine. And when we are in tune with the divine, the communication is bidirectional. Jesus invites Zacchaeus to come down. And Jesus invites himself to his home. God is always willing to be with us. God is always willing to come into our abode, into our hearts. God is a constant guest if we would allow him. Zacchaeus allows Jesus to be his guest. And in allowing Jesus to be his guest, there's transformation. Zacchaeus seeks to repent of all that he has done amiss, all that would have stained him and caused others to speak of him as a sinner. And then finally, Jesus reminds the gathering that Zacchaeus too is divine. He is of Abraham. And that his mission in the world was to save the lost. That sense of lostness is a very powerful experience for all of us. The sense of lostness in not knowing who we are. Stumbling around in life. Stumbling through life, getting on one fad or another, buying into the illusion, buying into what's considered important, and sometimes even more so, insisting that our children buy into it. And we bend them from the moment they're in the cradle 
into what we consider the world is about. We no longer seek God and an understanding of God in order that we have an understanding of ourselves, in order that we can get past the Maya, get past all of the illusion that has overtaken our world. That sense of self-importance. I think we've all been able to watch in disbelief all that has taken place in the US in the past few days. But it is simply a playing out, an acting out of what all of us to one degree or another have bought into. We're all about ourselves. We're all about what we think is important. We don't allow ourselves to align ourselves with the source of all that is. Even when we claim the faith, as you would have seen the former president have a for a moment with a Bible in hand. That is how we are, with the Bible external to us, or the guidance external to us. We hold it, we show it off. But unlike the prophets of old who at times were asked to swallow a scroll, we fail to recognize that the invitation is to transformation, not to display, but to transformation. The story of Zacchaeus is one of the few stories and scriptures that give us that whole journey and purpose the work Zacchaeus did in order to be seen and to see. The willingness that he offered in receiving Jesus as guests. His allowance of Jesus' presence to be transformative in his life. His willingness to take a different route because of that transformation and Jesus' acknowledgement that this is what the work is about, saving the lost, not labeling them, not condemning them, but saving the lost. And how do we save the lost? Again, this passage brings such a wonderful example. Jesus didn't tell Zacchaeus what he should do or who he should be or what he should become. Jesus was just present. And the presence of Jesus allowed Zacchaeus to find himself and to speak his own truth, to say who he is and to say what he needed to do in order to be truly himself. That's how we save others. We don't impose on them our thinking, on our way, and our understanding, and our belief system. No. The way we save another is to help the other find him or herself. Because you and I have no clue who that person really is. Only they themselves at their core know who they are, know what they've done, know what they need to do. Only they know how they've blocked the flow of grace in their lives. So we give them 
or we invite them to take their power. That's the transformative work of God. When the individual reclaims his or her power and in his or her power lives out the divine presence. Zacchaeus declared who he was, what he needed to do in order to be fully himself. May we, like Zacchaeus, find such opportunity in our own lives to declare who we are. When the work has been done and the transforming presence of the Christ is within us, and we are open to that transformation. May we, in our own self, in our own knowing, take whatever steps we are led to take on our own by God's grace. Because we too are children of the divine. Have a blessed and safe day, all of you.